we have so far been discussing the physics of electric field in a dielectric medium and uh, with this lecture today uh, we will be completing our discussion on electrostatics and uh, I wish to briefly remind you about uh, what we are doing in the last lecture. Uh, we had uh, uh, talked about uh, polarization, uh, if you recall we defined polarization as the dipole moment per unit volume of a material. Now, what we had seen is that uh, when I have a polarized medium, uh, there are uh, charges which we have been calling as uh, the bound charge uh, which are there uh, and, and these are not fictitious charges, but these are charges which arise because an external electric field uh, might um, uh, separate the uh, positive and the negative charge centers. It might also arise because the molecule has uh, an, a permanent dipole moment, so that there are positive and negative charges. And we have seen that uh, how these uh, could be aligned, so as to produce a surface charge or uh, even a bound charge density within the volume. And what we have seen is that the surface charge density of these bound charges is essentially given by the normal component of the polarization vector. And the bound charge density is given by negative divergence of the polarization vector. So, uh, when you describe a dielectric medium, uh, you have to talk about two types of charges, charge densities, one charge density on the surface and the other uh, charge density which we call as the volume charge density. Now, let us look at uh, what uh, uh, this does to our Maxwell's equation. If you recall, we had uh, seen that the divergence of the electric field is given by rho by epsilon 0, where rho is the charge density. Now, when we are talking about a dielectric medium, the charge density has two components. There is a free component which is which are the type of charges we had seen when we are talking about electric uh, uh, electrostatics in a vacuum. And now, there are these new charges which are uh, the bound charges and since rho is the uh, net volume charge density, what I have is that the divergence of the electric field is given by rho free plus rho bound divided by epsilon 0. Uh, now, it is sometimes convenient. Uh, to define a vector called the displacement vector or most physicists and electrical engineers prefer to call them just by vector d. The vector d as we had seen is defined as epsilon 0 times the electric field E plus p and this E is the net electric field on uh, at whatever location you are talking about. Now, let us look at what this vector d represents. Now, if you take the divergence of d, you notice that del dot of p then becomes epsilon 0, I am assuming epsilon 0 is uh, constant. So, del dot of a constant time and electric field. So, epsilon 0 del dot e, which is nothing but uh, uh, my uh, this rho by epsilon 0 plus del dot p, which is minus the rho bound. Now, when you add them up, the bound charge densities cancel out and you are left with del dot of d equal to rho free. So, in other words d is a vector which uh, arises out of if you could imagine that the real charges could be separated from the uh, bound charges in a medium, then the electric field for which the responsible agent is uh, are the uh, actual free charges and uh, that gives rise to the displacement vector d. Now, recall that there is a difference in the dimensions of the two in the sense d and e they do not have the same dimension and so therefore, del dot of d instead of being uh, like uh, electric field rho by epsilon 0, it is actually rho free 
and where rho free is the real free charge densities in the medium. Now, just as using uh, the delta dot of E equal to rho by epsilon 0 could be converted into the integral form of the Maxwell's equation uh, E dot d s equal to total charge enclosed by epsilon 0. You can use the same thing here and get that the uh, the surface integral of the displacement vector d d dot d s is just the free charges uh, enclosed within that surface. And uh, notice that there is no epsilon 0 on the other side. So, it is just the total free charge that is enclosed. Now, this is the integral form of the Gauss's theorem for uh, in general case, whether there are there are uh, dielectric medium or not if it is not there, then of course, we know that d and e are simply related. Now, the uh, other problem which we started talking about last time, but did not have time to complete, I will briefly sketch and this was I have put a uniformly polarized sphere in an external uniform electric field, which is acting in the z direction. So, the electric field at far distances is E 0 times z, which uh, obviously, has arisen from an external potential V phi external equal to minus E 0 r cos theta. We have assumed that the problem has azimuthal symmetry, so that only the theta cosine theta is there. Now, uh, we had seen earlier that when you write down a potential, uh, you can do an expansion in what we call as Legendre associated Legendre polynomials, which are basically expansions in powers of cosine of theta. Now, in this case, what we have is that external electric field uh, being E 0, the external field uh, potential at large distances is minus E 0 r cos theta. So, uh, Notice that whatever general form of the Legendre polynomial I write, that has to be such that that at r as r goes to infinity, namely at large distances, it must give me minus E 0 r cos theta, which implies that if when I write down the potential expression in terms of the Legendre polynomial, I only need to retain powers of cosine theta and not powers of higher order cosine theta, uh, cosine 2 theta, 3 theta etcetera. So, let us look at that. The field in the vacuum uh, which is uh, phi 1 r theta, then I have got a 1 r cos theta and you remember that I had that B L by r to the power L plus 1 uh, P L cos theta and there again only P 1 cos theta will remain. Uh, I cannot write the others uh, because uh, in that case, I will have cosine 2 theta etcetera, which I of course, do not have. And plus this has the right uh, uh, limit as r goes to infinity, it gives me uh, a 1 r cos theta, which is the behavior at large distances. Now, inside the dielectric, I obviously cannot write anything which has a power of 1 over r, because inside the dielectric, the origin is included. So, as a result, the potential inside the dielectric is a 2 r cos theta and nothing else, because I need up to cos theta, but I, I do not have 1 over r or any of its power, because then at r equal to 0, the fields would diverge. So, the, these have been the uh, basic points, which enabled us to write, write down the two potential expressions. Uh, having done that, uh, what we notice is that since the uh, potential form at large distance is minus E 0 r cos theta, if you compare these two expressions namely phi 1 with phi external, this tells me that A 1 must be equal to minus E 0. Likewise, uh, I have the following thing that since the potential is continuous on the surface of the sphere, uh, irrespective of whatever value of cosine theta we take, these two expressions these two expressions must become uh, equal when I put r is equal to a at any theta. So, that theta will cancel out and I will be left with 
a 1 which is minus e 0. So, minus e 0 a plus b 1 by a square equal to a 2 times a that tells me a 2 is minus e 0 plus b 1 by a q. So, I have got uh, these two expressions and uh, uh, let us now try to find out these remaining constants. I have already found a 1, I need to find uh, b 1 as well as a 2. The So, there are two uh, uh, conditions which we need to talk about. On the surfaces, we have no free charges. So, that tells me that the normal component of the uh, d field is continuous and let us use them to find out our remaining constant. So, therefore, normal component of the electric field is minus E 0, uh, E 0 because the dielectric uh, uh, function uh, outside the medium is E 0, the, per, the vacuum uh, permittivity and this times d phi 1 by d r that is the normal component at r is equal to a and that must be equal to uh, the from the uh, side of the uh, sphere. So, it should be d phi 2 divided by d r. Now, uh, recall that I already have an expression for uh, E 1 and E 2. Just to recall for you, my E 1 uh, is this expression which is uh, the, the phi 1 is this expression a 1 r cos theta plus b 1 by this. So, therefore, if I differentiate with respect to this, I am getting uh, minus epsilon 0 a 1 plus epsilon 0 uh, differentiation of that b 1 by r square that gives me 2 b 1 by uh, r cube and since I am putting r is equal to a that is by a cube and that is equal to minus epsilon and d phi 2 by this the d r which is equal to a 2 and uh, that gives me that uh, recall that a 1 is e 0. So, I get a 2 is equal to minus uh, so there is a minus minus there so i've got a a2 this e2 a2 is equal to a1 which is minus e0 so minus epsilon 0 by epsilon e0 and uh, then i've got a minus uh, epsilon 0 by epsilon again 2b1 by a cube. So, that is one relation and uh, uh, so therefore, it tells me uh, if I uh, connect this with the previous expression that I had given you and that was uh, a 2 was equal to minus e 0 plus b 1 divided by a cube. Now, I need to equate these two and uh, if I equate these two I get immediately an expression for b 1. Uh, you can immediately do this, this is rather trivial uh, arithmetic and what I get is b 1 is equal to epsilon 0 a cube times epsilon minus epsilon 0 divided by epsilon plus 2 epsilon 0. Well, basically I am equating these two terms and just doing a simplification. Remember the definition of the dielectric constant, which is basically epsilon by epsilon 0. So, I can rewrite this expression in terms of the dielectric constant as well, which will be E 0 a cube and dielectric constant kappa minus 1 divided by kappa plus 2. And if you now plug it in into this expression for a 2, you will find a 2 is equal to which is minus e 0 plus b 1 by a cube. Just put the b 1 into this expression, you get this is equal to minus 3 times e 0 divided by kappa plus 2 times uh, well that is it and that tells me that the function the potential phi 2 which is equal to 
a 2 r cos theta, which is simply given by uh, minus 3 a 0 by kappa plus 2 r cos theta. Okay. And so, this, this is my potential and the corresponding internal electric field is simply dividing this by uh, uh, taking d by d z of this and which will be simply given by 3 e 0 by kappa plus 2 as is written here. So, what is the effect? What does it all mean? Uh, notice that we said there, there is an external electric field which is uniform uh, given by E 0, but when we calculated the electric field, we found that it is given by E which was uh, minus 3 E 0 by uh, kappa plus 2. So, what it means is there is a reduction of the strength of the electric field by an amount E 0 minus E, which is E 0 minus the value of E that we just now calculated which is 3 times E 0 by kappa plus 2, which is equal to kappa minus 1 by kappa plus 2 times E 0. Kappa is the dielectric constant. Uh, now, uh, what I want to uh, do is to relate this uh, to uh, a you know how much is the effect. Now, what I want to do is to relate this to uh, a field produced by uh, a uh, dipole. Uh, if you recall that uh, the field of a dipole which is uh, located at the origin and if you want to calculate the field on the uh, equatorial surface if you like, it is given by p by 4 pi epsilon 0 a cube. So, what we are trying to say is this what is this equivalent dipole? Uh, remember, we have just now calculated uh, the reduction in the field that is the additional field uh, that is produced by the uh, because of the fact that I have a dielectric medium is given by kappa minus 1 by kappa plus 2 into E 0. So, what is the effective? What is the effective dipole moment? Now, you have seen that the electric field on the equatorial surface due to a dipole of strength p is given by p divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 a cube. So, therefore, my effective p strength of the dipole is given by 4 pi epsilon 0 a cube times this uh, reduction that has been produced namely kappa minus 1 by kappa plus 2 into E 0 and this time let me uh, put a direction namely the unit vector z. Uh, remember again that the polarization vector p is dipole moment per unit volume. So, it is p divided by 4 pi by 3 a cube which is the volume of the sphere and therefore, this is equal to uh, 3 epsilon 0 kappa minus 1 by kappa plus 2 times E 0 times z. So, therefore, the uh, field in the dielectric is uh, given by which we had seen is given by minus kappa minus 1 by kappa plus 2 into E 0 if you now relate this to the dipole uh, the polarization vector that we have produced that is simply equal to minus p by 3 epsilon 0 z should be minus p by uh, 3 n and epsilon 0 should be p by 3 epsilon 0. So, look at the picture of the uh, electric field that is there. At large distances, I expect the electric field to be parallel to the z direction and uh, so, notice that the field lines come and uh, sort of approach from the side 
this side. So, obviously, uh, this edge is going to become uh, uh, positive and, uh, and the field sort of go like this and uh, the field inside is uniform. So, we are talking about the reduction in field due to polarization. Uh, let us uh, look at that uh, a little more. Uh, suppose, I take a point charge in an infinite isotropic dielectric having a permittivity epsilon. And let me put, so which means I am considering a huge sphere of some radius. Uh, let me put a charge q at the origin and uh, clearly by symmetry the electric field must be radial and symmetric. And by Gauss's law I know that uh, 4 pi r square times d uh, must be equal to the charge that is enclosed and the only free charge is q which tells me that the d is q by 4 pi r square uh, times the unit radial vector. And since the uh, dielectric is uniform, uh, the electric field vector E is just d by epsilon. So, which is 4 pi by epsilon r square r. Uh, remember that when we had uh, empty space, uh, it was the essentially the identical expression excepting for the fact that instead of the epsilon in the denominator, I had an epsilon 0 in the uh, denominator for E. So, which means the electric field is actually reduced because epsilon is greater than epsilon 0. It is actually reduced by a factor uh, which is epsilon by epsilon 0 namely by the dielectric constant. So, dielectric constant is essentially a measure of the uh, reduction the factor by which the electric field is reduced inside and I must qualify a linear dielectric medium. If it is not linear then of course, we have to worry about that uh, what it does, but, but nevertheless qualitatively that is what a dielectric uh, uh, function of the medium if you want to say it is not constant, but it is a function. So, this gives me the effective factor by which the strength of the electric field gets reduced because of the polarization of the medium. Uh, now, so let us look at that uh, uh, what happens to what is my polarization now. So, polarization vector then which is d minus epsilon 0 e which is epsilon minus epsilon 0 times e and that is simply given by this expression. That is I have simply replaced for the electric vector the q by 4 pi r square etcetera. And so, this gives me kappa minus 1 by kappa uh, times q by 4 pi r square because the electric field is 1 over 4 pi epsilon r square and epsilon by epsilon 0 is my kappa. Uh, so, so, therefore, if I now look at uh, a spherical if you like Gaussian volume. Now, the polarization is given by this. So, I can calculate how much is the bound charge in that medium, because bound charge is minus the divergence of p and p we have just now seen remember most of these are constant. So, they will come out. So, p is kappa minus 1 by kappa and q by 4 pi r square also I will bring it out 4 pi I will bring it out. I am left with minus del dot of unit vector r by r square which means del dot of r by r cube. This I can easily calculate because it is divergence of a vector multiplied by a scalar. So, I must have this I am just calculating this I must have gradient of 1 over r cube dot with r plus uh, 1 over r cube times del dot of r. Remember that uh, divergence of a scalar times a vector is grads of a scalar dotted with that vector plus that scalar multiplied by the divergence of that vector. 
and this is <laughs> minus 3 by r to the power 4 dot r vector and if you recall del dot of r is just 3. So, therefore, it is 3 by r cube and uh, uh, this is of course, uh, there should have been a unit vector r here. So, therefore, this is exactly equal to this vector r dotted with r is just r, r by r fourth is r cube. So, this is equal to 0. So, therefore, uh, the volume bound charge density is 0. So, what am I left with? The only thing that I can have now will be the uh, surface charge density. Now, the surface charge density we have seen is p dot n. You remember that I have a sphere, uh, but then the dielectric medium is inside the sphere and the so surface normal is not along outward radial, but along inward radial. So, therefore, it is minus p dot r and this is equal to minus well p dot unit vector r. So, therefore, it is kappa minus 1 divided by kappa times q by 4 pi r square. So, this sphere dielectric sphere that I have got with a charge inside does not have uh, any volume charge density, but has a surface charge density given by this, which means that there is a net surface charge which is included, which is uh, which appears on the surface of the uh, sphere and this is simply obtained by multiplying this with the radius of the sphere namely with 4 pi r square, which is which gives me simply minus kappa minus 1 by kappa times q. This is a negative quantity because kappa is greater than 1, which tells me that the effective charge in the uh, of this situation is my charge which I put in. So, let me call it q effective. The charge that I put in plus the bound charge which is negative, which is simply equal to q by kappa. Now, this again emphasizes the point that I was making that uh, the effect of a dielectric is to uh, uh, provide a measure of the factor by which the electric field strength is decrease or decreases. Now, this tells me that uh, the you can also look at it another way by saying that this means that the though you have charged a put a charge q, but real charge q the effective charge which uh, a, a test charge will experience uh, is as if uh, there was a reduc reduced amount of charge namely q by kappa. Uh, just to continue with uh, uh, the same application, uh, let us consider uh, a this is a situation which is known to you from school that is what happens when you put uh, a dielectric inside a parallel plate capacitor. And uh, so, basically you are aware that what happens is the capacitance increases, but let us look at it uh, from our new uh, you know whatever we have learnt now. So, what we say is this we have just now agreed that if you put a dielectric uh, inside a capacitor or in any medium, the electric field inside will be reduced due to the polarization of the medium. Now, what I have done here is to have a parallel plate capacitor with a charge plus q on, on the left hand side and a minus q on the right hand side. Now, if I uh, consider a Gaussian volume in the uh, shape of a parallel pipe of uh, you know certain area A let us say and a sort of a negligible uh, width L. Now, let us apply let us apply Gauss's theorem uh, to this namely d dot s. Now, remember the d field is easy because I know that the, there is real charge on the uh, parallel plates capacitors. In this case, I have taken my Gaussian volume which is a rectangular parallel pipe uh, to be uh, enclosed about the negative uh, plate. 
So, d dot s and if the area is a which is equal to d times a, uh, a is the area of uh, one of the surfaces and that amount that is enclosed is nothing but the amount of charge q on an area a of the capacitor plate. So, d times a is equal to q and so therefore, d is equal to your q and just I have emphasized q free by a. So, these are the free charges which are in the capacitor plate and in the next expression what I have done is to write this d as a form of a vector. Remember the magnitude of d we have calculated here is q free, q free is the same as this q that I have written down by a. Uh, I put a minus sign uh, because the dielectric medium is to the left of this and this is the outward normal is n. So, the n on the uh, inside will be minus of this and so therefore, the electric di di displacement vector is given by q f by a n and the electric field is d by epsilon which is then given by minus q f by epsilon a n. Now, I can calculate how much is the potential difference uh, from the electric field which is nothing but multiplying the magnitude of the electric field with the distance between the plates and this gives me that uh, remember this was my definition of q by c. So, if you now do that multiply this expression with d you find that the capacitance expression is given by kappa times a epsilon 0 divided by d. So, it tells me the effect of a dielectric is to increase the capacitance of parallel plate capacitor. Now, let me go slightly shift uh, to another important point. Now, let us suppose that I am looking at a dielectric medium and uh, consider them as a collection of molecules uh, and let us suppose that there is a field in which all these are in uh, which I am going to call as the macroscopic field. Now, if you consider a gas collection of gas, the molecules of the gas are well separated. So, I assume that when a collection a of molecules is put in a electric field, the each molecule experiences an electric field at its site which is equal to the average macroscopic field that is there in the medium. Now, you see if you are considering a gas where the molecules are well separated, uh, the there is this is a very good description because the average macroscopic field uh, which is felt is can be considered as E and how much is that? Remember that the polarization can be written as epsilon 0 chi E which is the susceptibility times the electric field and E is the macroscopic field. Now, if you consider however, a dense medium where the molecules are packed close then if you consider a particular molecule then the uh, electrons in the vicinity of that molecule they will be uh, polarized of course and they are responsible for producing what we can call as a local field at the location of the molecule which we are considering. So, as a result what will happen is that the uh, so, number one the applied electric field ch changes the charge distribution. So, this will mean that these will polarize the uh, molecules that are there and now when I am considering a particular atom it will see now a local field and uh, this local field that it sees will be written as the dipole moment is equal to alpha times the local field. I, we assume that the dipole the amount of polarization is linear in the field and this alpha is known as the atomic polarizability. And I know that the dipole moment per unit volume is my uh, polarization p. So, I have multiplied this with the density. So, therefore, the polarization p is given by 
n alpha times e local, but there is a small problem. So, I have considered uh, what the neighboring atoms do, but I know that an atom cannot exert a force on itself. So, therefore, I must subtract, I must subtract from the uh, average field uh, the, uh, the field due to the atom. So, if I consider my atom to have a typical volume 1 over n, then the at the electric field uh, at the due to the atom is minus p by 3 epsilon 0, which is minus n p by 3 epsilon 0. So, therefore, the local field is not E, but E minus the E atom. So, which is given by E plus n p by 3 epsilon 0. And uh, uh, I know that induced dipole moment is proportional to the local field. So, therefore, I can write this p as this. Now, I can do a bit of an algebra and the algebra is this that p if you recall is epsilon 0 times susceptibility times e which is epsilon 0 kappa minus 1 times e. So, local field is e plus p by 3 epsilon 0 which is e plus kappa minus 1 by 3 e which is this expression substituted add it up it becomes kappa plus 2 by 3 and how much is p? p is n alpha times e local. So, just write down uh, this n alpha times k plus 2 by 3 times e and that is equal to this expression because these are just two different ways of writing. And so, if you do that, that gives you an expression for the atomic polarizability which is n alpha equal to 3 epsilon 0 kappa minus 1 by kappa plus 2. What is this relation? Notice this is relating the atomic polarizability with the dielectric constant of the medium. The dielectric constant of the medium is more an average thing because we have said it is it's an average effect, but what does it actually do to an atomic polarizability and this relationship is known as Clausius Massuti relation. We will uh, uh, bring this discussion of electrostatics to a close with a discussion on what happens to the energy of the charge distribution. If you recall, uh, the energy of the charge distribution, uh, when we worked it out for the case of uh, free space, that is I have a collection of charges, uh, what we did is to assume that initially my charges were at infinity and I bought charges, first I brought one charge, put it somewhere, said no work. Next time I bring in a charge, they, I have to do some work because the charge which has already been there has established a potential and I have to bring this additional charge in the field of that potential. So, as a result, I assembled the charge distribution bit by bit and I will not go through the same argument again, but if you recall we had shown that the work done which is stored as the energy of the electrostatic field in case of vacuum was given by 1 over 2 integral of rho x which is the density at the point x times the potential at the point x d cube x. Now, it is not very clear that you can use this expression when you have a polarized medium, a dielectric medium, because in case of a dielectric, supposing I am assembling the charges bit by bit, the work that needs to be done in addition to putting the charge wherever it should be, that is locating the charge, bringing them from infinity and putting them in their place. I also need to do uh, or take account of some amount of work to be done in polarizing uh, the medium, because I have, have to produce certain amount of a state of polarization of the medium. Now, what do I do? Now, let us suppose, uh, let me give you a general expression. Suppose, I have a charge density distribution already established. I have a 
dielectric medium and how it has been established let us not go into at this moment. Now, suppose I have a charge density rho. Now, let us say that my charge density rho changes by an amount delta rho. So, rho goes to rho plus delta rho. Okay. Now, the amount of charge density changes slightly phi of x is the potential due to charge density which has already been established. Remember that uh, as I am bringing in a bit of charge, I do not uh, uh, assume that the potential has uh, already adjusted itself. Now, so therefore, the if phi of x is the potential due to already existing charge, then what I have is this. Let us look at uh, I know that del dot of d is equal to rho. So, therefore, my delta rho is uh, del dot of delta d. So, which means that the work that I am doing, I have an additional work is necessary now and that is given by uh, okay, how much is the additional work let us look at that. Uh, this will be integral now you have to be careful uh, let me first write down the expression E dot del dot of de delta d d q x. How did I get this expression? Let me let me let me come back to this. Firstly, uh, you notice that I am now doing an additional work in changing the density charge density from rho to delta rho. So, therefore, my delta rho delta w is integral delta rho phi of x d q x. Why is there factor of half missing here? The reason is if you recall what is the origin of this factor of half? The factor of half was introduced because that so that I do not do a double counting between charge number 1 and charge number 2. In this case, I am simply bringing in a char additional charge delta rho. So, therefore, how much work is done? Now, this is nothing but this delta rho we have seen is del dot delta d times phi of x d cube x. Now, I can uh, simplify this uh, by doing an integration by parts. So, delta w is equal to remember I have got here delta divergence of delta d phi x d cube x. So, what is my integration? My integration will be let me show both of them together. My integration will be uh, integral of this part which is nothing but uh, the. Uh, so, I will do this phi of x times the integral of this part. Okay. Uh, so, therefore, I will write this as phi of x delta d. Now, in some limits, okay, the limits will be uh, you know the, the uh, you are bringing things from large distances. So, therefore, I know that the potential has to become 0 at large distances. Now, minus integral of integral of the first part which is delta d times the gradient of phi, but minus this minus which is there and the gradient of phi will give me an electric field E. So, this minus will become plus and I will be left with d q x. So, this is the expression that I get this term will vanish this term will vanish because uh, my fields at large distances they are 0. So, so this is my delta w which is integral delta d 
dot e d cube x. So, what is my total energy? So, my total energy E would be now remember that this is a small uh, displacement vector that I produced and uh, in principle what I require then is to bring from 0 that is when I did not have any uh, charges to the state which actually exists. In other words, I need d cube x integral and this delta d should go from 0 to its full value which means 0 to vector d and I have got if you like e dot delta d. Now, this is actually the correct expression for uh, calculating the uh, energy of the electrostatic field is not a very easy expression to calculate. However, if you take a linear dielectric, then I can write remember linear dielectric means E and D are linear. I can then write E dot delta D as equal to half of delta of E dot D because E and D are parallel to each other. So, D is some epsilon E so, which is epsilon times e square and so differentiation of e square gives me the factor of 2 that is why this factor of 2 is there. So, this then would give me uh, then this integration is easier because it is no longer e dot delta d, but it is delta of e dot d and you can now do, do that integration and get w as equal to half of integral of e dot e Okay. d cube x e dot d d cube x. Now, notice this expression w is equal to e dot d d cube x which appears uh, with a slight mistake on this uh, is uh, the expression from which you can get back the original form of integral rho x phi x d cube x half of that. But in getting there you need to assume that my dielectric is linear. If the dielectric is not linear then the right expression is this and the reason is that as you are bringing in uh, charges, as the medium is getting polarized, there is some history which is being built up and this effect is known as a hysteresis effect. This is, this is included here in this expression, certain amount of hysteresis is included. So, so, this expression is valid for a linear dielectric. This is of course, always valid and starting with this expression, I can go back to the other expression that we have talked about. So, all these days we have been talking about the physics behind electrostatics that is primarily a discussion of the electric field and its effects when we consider static charges. The only thing that is important to realize is that static charges can give many many effects. Last few lectures we have been talking about the medium how it is affected you know it medium gets polarized and so far we have been talking about static effect of charges. In the second part of our talk which will begin from the next module, we will be talking about what happens when these charges are allowed to move and that will open up another part of electromagnetic phenomena that we have so far not touched.